back here tonight guys uh to try and carry on with the discussion of alternators and uh just put across a couple of concepts and how you can understand the basics of alternators automotive alternators i'm talking about right so i uh, in the first video i showed you uh we kind of had a uh it was a small brushless dc motor and uh it was permanent magnets but we motored the motor in order to use it as a generator so the permanent magnets induced um, some voltage into the three different phases the three different windings of the the small little brushless dc motor again we used it as a generator and we could see the three phases and we rectified it and we've seen how that worked right but what i want to do is just step a wee bit back tonight and just consider induction you know the budget is unlimited here for demonstration purposes as you can see uh, what I basically have is some enameled wire that has been wound around a steel core. You might know that as a screw or a bolt. I just have a little permanent magnet here. You can see it having an effect on the uh, compass here. It's just there to prove that it is in fact a magnet. And can you appreciate that if I sweep the magnet actually past, without actually picking it up, if I actually sweep the magnet past the coil, what I'm going to do is induce a voltage into the coil right now you probably read that in a textbook a million and one times even in grade school they kind of discussed this so it doesn't get much simpler than this but let's actually see it it's one thing to say it let's actually see it i have the two leads on the little coil actually hooked up to my oscilloscope here right just so you can actually see it i've got it on a very slow time base so we can make some comparisons right so all i'm doing is actually sweeping the magnet past the the coil here and you can see that it does in fact turns out physics is that they're reported in high school textbooks for the most part is accurate right so you can see that i can induce a very small voltage about maybe 10 millivolts peak to peak into this little coil here right but it proves the point so there's a couple of things that can affect how much voltage I can induce, guys, right? Or well, it should be noted that there has to be relative motion between the magnetic field and the coil. If I bring it in and keep it stationary, there won't be any induction at all, right? You need, you need the magnetic field to cut across the, uh, the conductors in order to induce the voltage. So simply keeping it stationary does nothing. So all I was doing was sweeping it back and forth, holding them both at the same time so the magnet doesn't suck in the, the bolt and the coil and uh, you can see the little voltage it was induced so a couple of things will affect how much voltage you can induce the strength of the magnetic field that you're using the number of coils that you're using and just how fast I could sweep past let me cut you back to the scope here and I'll show you slow movement and then I'll try and speed it up a wee bit I'm only doing it by hand so there's limits right sweeping past the coil slowly and then quite a bit quicker. And you can see we can get considerable increase in the amplitude. There's an increase in the voltage there, how much I can actually uh, induce any of the wires and scope. Of course, it's completely unloaded. We're just talking about a few millivolts here, right? There's really only one method of control. We can't really, can, uh, you know, in a practical system, we can't really affect the number of coils. Um, we can't really affect the strength of the permanent magnet because it's a fixed permanent magnet. So really the speed that we sweep past the coils at is really our only variable here, right? So there's some serious limitations to what you can do with a permanent magnet. But again, your high school or even grade school physics, science uh, textbooks would have told you that, you know, Coil of wire can not only be used to induce electricity, but you can use electricity to produce an electromagnet. Simple. Again, basic, basic grade school science, right? Now this coil is, in actual fact, it's um, from uh, an air conditioning, automotive air conditioning compressor, the clutch assembly. This is the electromagnet. The electromagnet coil 
that pulls the clutch plate in in order to engage the drive for the compressor. That's what this actually is. But it's, an anal it's analogous to our field coil in an alternator, right? This is our field magnet. If we had a permanent magnet alternator, this produces the field, yeah? Induces the uh, flux into the stator windings. So this is gonna be our electromagnet. So again, our coil of wire is just our model. Imagine this is the, uh, the shaft on the, uh, the rotor uh, that rotates within the stator. And that's what it looks like in reality. Again, this is just a clip from the textbook, right? So we have our rotor shaft. Um, obviously there'd be drive on one side of it, likely the threaded side here. The pulley drives the, uh, the drive shaft, rotates the shaft. These um, slip rings, they're not commutators, they're slip rings because they're smooth. They actually provide the field um, current. So they provide the energy in order to energize the field coil within the assembly here. This is nothing more than a coil, very similar to this coil. The only difference is it shows you uh, there's two pole pieces attached to it. So this electromagnet, let me turn it on guys, I can make my point here. Let me put a wee bit of power to it. And it's only at four volts for a reason at the moment here, guys. You'll see, let me turn it off. That's where you can see magnetic north here in my location. You can see the needle. Let me turn on the electromagnet and you can see that it is in fact forming a magnetic field, right? Let me turn it off. There you go. So we can form an electromagnet. We can form a magnet that has two poles here. You see in the movement of the compass, simply by running um, a current through it, right? Providing voltage. There's two wires from the power supply here that are running uh, a voltage through the coil. And again, you can see that we have a north. I have a rotate around the other side. You can see it's pointing the other way, right? We have a sub pointing towards the magnet, I mean, right? So. In reality, what they do to the rotor is they actually use two pole pieces. Two pole pieces that are like fingers. If you interlace your fingers, what will happen is the pole ends up being magnetically coupled basically via the, the pole pieces, the claws, and you end up with a north and a south alternate pole. And the magnetic flux is always going from north to south, right? So as this rotates, you have a north and a south pole. It's constantly inducing... Um, the magnetic flux is constantly cutting the stator. This is maybe even a better uh, graphic in the drawing here, guys. Again, we have our coil, very similar to our coil right here. And again, it's energized via the slip rings in the next drawing that we, the previous drawing that we just saw. And it forms an electromagnet and the pole pieces here will uh, intermesh and give us the alternating north and south, north and south. It magnetically couples the poles basically across the, uh, the outer diameter of the coil and makes it practical for the induction uh, into the stator windings. So here's just a graphic of a stator here, guys. It happens to be uh, um, a Y uh, stator. And uh, it's the rotor that actually rotates inside here. And again, the north and south um, poles uh, from the uh, um, pole claws as the rotor rotates induces the magnetic the magnetic uh, flux into the windings here right again the whole goal is to get magnetic flux to cut across uh, a conductor right and induce um, a current voltage into the uh, into the windings and this is uh, the uh, what the stator actually looks like in reality one right? of the major considerations was the field um, the field strength, again, fixed with a permanent magnet. But with a coil, we can just adjust how much voltage or current is running through this thing, right? So I've got it at four volts at the moment. Let's see how much uh, voltage we can induce into the system here. We'll check it out on the scope. And then we'll alter the feed to the field coil and see what our, how our output changes. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna try and keep the speed and uh, distance that the, that the uh, coil 
uh, cuts through the uh, the magnetic field here, guys, right? And just to keep things kind of, you know, equal with respect to um, the comparison. There'd be no point in cheating here. The whole point is to demonstrate the differences, right? So there's the coil, and you can see we have a tiny little bit of AC being induced. And it is AC, by the way, of course, guys, right? You can see that. So I've got a tiny little bit, uh, bit of AC. So that's the field, our field coil here, our clutch coil, uh, being fed with only four volts. So I'm going to start ramping up the voltage. I, can, I have to stop here. I need to change my hands here, guys. Right, so. That's six volts. Eight volts. And I'm gonna quickly shift up to say 14 volts here. That's 14 volts. And then the magnetic pull gets so powerful it kind of pulls the bolt in. So that's why I have a long timeline on here, guys, right? So we can actually see the difference. So you can see that when the voltage was down towards closer towards four volts, this is the, the relative amplitude of the um, voltage that was induced into this stator. Again, our coil with a bolt. And as I ramped up the field uh, current or voltage, the amount of uh, current that was being supplied to the coil, you can see that we have a higher amplitude. So now, simply by altering how much field current we have, we can actually control the output of our little stator here. This is how it regulates the alternator itself, guys, in very simple terms. Simply by controlling the amount of field current, if the load were to go up, if you were to turn the headlights on, for example, obviously the system voltage will drop. That will be sensed by the regulator. The regulator will feed more field uh, coil current in order to restore um, a voltage level that is adequate to supply the loads and charge the battery. And the opposite is true if you were to turn the headlights off. The system uh, unloaded, the voltage will go up, the regulator will see that, then dial down the amount of uh, field coil current in order to drop the voltage and in order to maintain a happy equilibrium with respect to the load being fed and the battery being charged. So that's it, guys, right? Extremely simple um, uh, analogy, perhaps too simple, but I hope you get the idea, right? Permanent magnets, as we've seen uh, last week uh, in our little uh, demonstration that I did, has, have their limitations. They can be useful. There are even as alternators with permanent magnets that are out there for special applications. But I'm sure 99 point X is regulated alternators that vary the field current in order to um, manage the output from the alternator. Again, these are our stator windings, right? <laughs> Does they look much like a stator winding, but it's adequate for the demonstration. So simply by altering the amount of field coil current, we can change the amount of power, voltage and current that is induced into the stator in order to supply the loads for the car and to keep the battery charged. It's your alternator, of course, that feeds the loads, not the battery, when the car is actually, when the alternator is uh, is running. In the case of a permanent magnet, we can't change the strength of the, uh, the magnetic field. We can, of course, with an electromagnet. That's the whole beauty of it. You can alter the output of the, uh, the uh, stator windings, the alternator itself. And the speed of rotation, of course, the, the regulator can easily deal with the, uh, that. The higher speeds that the alternator is driven at, it will lower the field coil current accordingly in order to keep things at happy medium with respect to the voltage which is being fed to the system. The power output, if you will, can stay constant. So just as we close here, guys, uh, I'll mention we never discussed the rectification of the AC output from the uh, stator windings at all. Um, this is a pretty comprehensive subject in itself with the semiconductors and the uh, diode packs. So um, 
I'll just mention that the output from the three phases is rectified into pulsing DC and it's that that is actually fed into the network and for battery charging and load uh, um, feed purposes. Um, just shown on the drawing here is I was obviously manually regulating the uh, amount of field current that our uh, rotor or field windings was getting of course from our, my power supply and this is an old school drawing actually showing you a relay that used to uh, mechanically regulate the uh, uh, the field current that was applied to the uh, rotor itself and I'll see if I can maybe get my hands on one of these and dig a wee bit deeper into this so again the rectification has been left out for, in the interest of uh, simplicity that's it boys cheers